Well, good morning. You may be seated. Welcome to God's house today in Cross Point. We're just glad that you're here today. And I see we got a few chasing the end of summer, and we did it last week, and we skipped out. But it's good to be back in the house of the Lord, and, and good to see uh, some of you uh, back uh, after uh, being out, and uh, just like we were. And so we're just, uh, it's just great to be with you. We want to welcome everyone that's watching online this morning as well. We're honored you're here with us today. Uh, if you're a guest or visitor with us this morning, we're honored you're here. Looking for a church home, come hang out with us. We'd love to have you. I always say, these are the best people you ever want to meet. There's not a bad one in the bunch, and you don't want to miss your opportunity, okay? To be part of them, and uh, we're honored you're here. If you're a guest today, there's a, a connection card in the chair in front of you. Uh, just fill that out, and you can uh, just drop that in the offering in a few moments or at the, con- at the uh, connection card box out at the Welcome Center. Uh, we believe in prayer around here. If you have a prayer request, there's prayer request cards uh, back at the prayer wall there. Uh, if you're online, there's a, you can go to the ministries tra- tab. There's a prayer form that you can k- fill out if you have a need for prayer, and uh, we'll lift you up in prayer. But it's just uh, good to be uh, together this morning in the Lord's house. Just uh, welcome to everyone. Uh, I want, it's uh, our fourth Sunday of the month. It's our missions Sunday. We always talk about missions on the fourth Sunday of the month. So um, one of our missions team members, we do this missions adventure. Kayla's coming at this time uh, to, they got this organized. This is from them and to challenge us for a couple focuses for the next uh, four weeks. So Kayla, oh, you need a mic, don't you? Here you go. There you go. Can you hear me? Yes. All right. Good morning, church family. Um, so, as Pastor said, this is the fourth Sunday of the month, which means we are going to reveal our new missions challenge and prayer focus for the next month. Um, just kind of as a brief overcap, on behalf of the missions team, we hope you guys are enjoying this. It's just a different way to highlight some of our missionaries and be mindful and intentional about, about keeping them in our thoughts and prayers, as well as providing kind of um, practical ways that we can maybe cultivate a mission-centered mindset and habit in ourselves. So if I could get a volunteer, I have a penny here, to come scratch off and reveal the next one. All right, come on up. And we also do um, welcome your feedback and we welcome your ideas. So if you have any that you want to share with us, please feel free to do so. Anyone you want. Yep. Perfect. Thank you so much. So our challenge this month um, is going to help meet someone's need. So it's kind of vague, but we can pray about how we can help someone, someone's need. Um, and then our prayer focus is going to be for Troy and Heidi Darren out of Moldova. So. Thank you, Kayla. Would you show your appreciation for our missions team and all that they do? Troy and Heidi Darren, they're the longest missionaries our church has supported uh, over in Moldova, and they are right next to Ukraine. Uh, they have, I've told you this story before, but they built, the Lord put on Troy's heart to build 20 churches during COVID. They built them, and they're all, they've been all filled with refugees coming out of Ukraine because it's right next door. And so God's just using it. We've supported them. You're supporting them. So thank you for your monthly giving uh, towards that. So if you want to prepare your morning offering this morning and uh, include your missions giving, I know I included mine this morning. And so we want to, uh, wherever my check went, it's hiding. Here it is. Um, And so it's our regular ties, missions giving. So thank you in advance for your faithfulness and giving to the Lord today. Um, I just want to give you a few announcements. Men's breakfast uh, is... um, coming up September 10th, so it's, the, it's usually the first Saturday, it's the Saturday after uh, Labor Day, the 10th, uh, from 8 to 9 a.m. Guys, uh, please sign up uh, so we can prepare uh, for your coming. And then the, the women's, Women of the Word, is going to be September 17th from 9 to 10.30. Women, there's a sign up for you. Uh, it took a little break during the summertime, so you're back on. And Women of the Word, and meet here in the, uh, the, the church. And so, ladies, if you'll sign up uh, so you guys can get organized and and, uh, ready for that coming up September 17th, 9 a.m. to 10.30 uh, in the morning here at the church. Uh, We have a new small group that's starting uh, in September, September 24th, first on a Wednesday. Uh, It's a a book study, uh, Bible study, a fellowship in the first six chapters of Romans 
um, and led by Ed and Karen Blazeski at their home. Uh, and there's a sign up today. Um, uh, if you know Karen, she had the ladies' tea out there, and they're going to host that. Uh, it'd be a great small group uh, based on it's called the Normal Christian Life. And uh, talking and, and uh, just some, some understanding of, of some of the scriptures from Romans chapter 1 through 6. You'll be encouraged uh, and be a part of that and enjoy the fellowship uh, that comes with that as well. Chapter up this uh, week is Second Samuel chapters 11 through 15. Ushers, come forward if you would and wait upon us for our morning tithes and offering. Lord, thank you for this morning. Thank you for the opportunity to give our tithes, our missions giving to you. Thank you for the faithfulness of this congregation, Lord, to support missions works all over the world. Lord, this morning we pray for Troy and Heidi. Lord, thank you for them in Moldova and Kishnau. God, just bless their work as they have just uh, embarked on the groundbreaking of another church there that I saw the video of yesterday. God, I just pray you'd bless the work. Lord, I pray that they'd reach out to the refugees, many refugees that are staying in these churches would find you, they'd find Christian fellowship, love, they'd get to know your word. Uh, Lord, just uh, give Troy and Heidi wisdom as they're managing all that and working with the national church. We just thank you, God. Bless them, we pray today. And Lord, I pray that we as a people, Lord, would, as our challenge is given this morning, we would help somebody in need in this month. We'd make it a part of our heart to take action and do that. In your name we pray, amen. Lord, bless you as you give. If you'll turn your Bibles this morning to Romans chapter 12, and I'll get to my text in a moment, and I, I want to um, uh, just begin with, uh, to lead us into our text this morning, uh, as you're giving, um, a, a kind of a miracle story that happened in our life. I think I've told you maybe a part of this, but um, in the midst of um, a few years ago, I've been trying to reach out and share the love of Jesus with one of our neighbors for 20 years. And uh, in the midst of it, uh, you know, you go through normal relationships with neighbors and, and we became friends and, and I've mowed their lawn for three years or something like that. And, and so one day they asked me, they said, could we pay you and help you um, uh, just do something for you? And I said, you know what, the thing I would like you to do is let's just go out to eat to, uh, and have dinner together. And so sure, we went out to Olive Garden one day and, and uh, they took us out and we just spent time at Olive Garden and, and just having some fellowship and some time together and in the course of that conversation, uh, Greg said to me, he said, you know, uh, and he was dealing with some health issues. And I said to him at the, di- at, the, at the supper table, I said, Greg, I said in his health issues, I said, the one thing I care about is that you'll make heaven. And we talked about his relationship with the Lord a little bit and that, that just conversation with neighbors and our next door. He used to live across the street from us. He must not have been sick of us because he moved next door to us from across the street from us. So... Um, and I said, to, uh, I said, I just want to make sure you're ready for heaven. And he said to me, the most stunning thing that I have I, I had, I had heard, it just became a miracle in our lives. And what he didn't know at that point was, in, um, in the last few years before that, before COVID, we had, as a church, had reached out to the persecuted church. We'd had actually a pastor from Syria into our church, Pastor Fareed. Um, how many were here, you remember, when Pastor Fareed came? Uh, maybe a few of you do. And uh, he, he spoke broken English. I had to do an interview-style message from the pulpit. And, and Greg didn't know anything about that in that conversation at the table. But we had planted the seeds in Syria and in, 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 in the persecuted church in, in that area of the world in the Middle East. And so Greg said some amazing words to me at that table. He said, he said Jerry, you'd never believe that one of my colleagues, my work associates, from Syria had a talk with us at our cabin, and he says, I'm gonna, I want to talk to you about something that I don't tell anybody about. He says, but I want to talk to you about my relationship with God. And he begins to unfold the story about, I'm going to call him our friend from Syria, that began to tell him about the Jesus that is so important to me. So do you see the connection? We as a church are planting seeds in missions. We're reaching out to Syria, and I've been reaching out to my neighbor for 20 years, and God sends somebody from Syria to share the love of God with my next-door neighbor. Can you believe it? I wanted to meet. It's just an incredible story. And it, it, it goes on from there. So uh, in, 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 the, in the course of the next few weeks, my, my neighbor got very sick. I had the privilege of leading him to the Lord up at the hospital, and... and uh, and I was in the, ICU, uh, in the ICU, and I said, Greg, do you remember our conversation? 
I says, is now the time to accept Jesus? He said, yes. And I prayed with him to accept Jesus. And, and he lived another month longer. I ended up doing his funeral. And uh, we had to do it at a different church because it, 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 was, so, it was a large funeral. This building couldn't even hold it. And I got to, in that, my, guess what? My neighbor, other neighbors came to that and, and came to the service. I get to preach to other, other uh, of my neighbors. In that, in that God orchestrated all this. But I said, before the funeral, I said, I want to meet the man from Syria at the funeral. And I got to meet him. And in the midst of, of, of meeting him at the funeral, we struck up a conversation. I says, I want to I know about your conversation with Greg. And he told me a little bit about it. And it was a small, but after, after that was done, we invited him to our house. Uh, Kathy, our neighbor, invited our friend from Syria over one night for supper. And in the conversation, we were, we're talking. Uh, our friend from Syria walks through the front door. Kathy's with him, Greg's wife, now widow. And he said something to me I'll never forget. He said these words, thanks for the invitation. Thanks for the invitation. That's the message title this morning, the invitation. And um, I, I, it was maybe, I woke up in the middle of the night a few days later, and, and I, I, I mark those in some notes in a little journal I keep of things that I'm contemplating speaking about. Those words rang out. And as we sat at the dinner table, he said these words. I, I was stunned. He lived in a different state. In his profession, he was in some schooling. And I don't want to throw another state under a bus. Is that okay? I don't do that. I don't want to do that. So he said, he says, in three years that he lived in that state, nobody ever invited him out or over. Nobody did until he moved to Wisconsin. What does that say? Three years living in a place, nobody invited him over. Or nobody invited him out. He says, I don't even want to go back to that state. I don't want to ever live in that state. That was the feelings that he had. So I want to, I want to talk about this this morning. And the message title is The Invitation. Romans chapter 12. I want to look at verses 9 through 16 this morning. And I'm going to highlight three words that I don't want to give away this morning. But maybe they'll capture your attention as we read our text this morning. Romans 12 verse 9. It says, let love be without hypocrisy. Abhor what is evil. Cling to what is good. Be kindly affectionate to one another with brotherly love in honor giving preference to one another. Not lagging in diligence, fervent in spirit serving the Lord. Rejoicing in hope, patient in tribulation, continuing steadfastly in prayer. Distributing to the needs of the saints, given to hospitality. Bless those who persecute you, bless and do not curse. Rejoice with those who rejoice, and weep with those who weep. Be of the same mind toward one another. Do not set your mind on high things, but associate with the humble. Do not be wise in your own opinion. Father, this morning, I pray that your Holy Spirit will go into the hearts and minds and, and, and speak to your people those listening online, those in this room, in a way that I cannot. I, I pray that there would be something that would arise in the hearts of your people that would change us and change the way we live out our Christian life, that would be meaningful in our lives. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Three questions to begin for you to think about this morning. Do you wish that someone would invite you to their house. Maybe it's an, even an ache in your heart. Do you wish someone would invite you out to eat? So let's reverse that. When was the last time you invited someone other than your family to the dinner table? This morning I want to talk a little bit about the power of the table. The power of the table. And even if you have a card table at home, and that's all you have. My wife said, don't get near it, don't bump it. It will fall over. The flower arrangement will be a mess. I didn't set it up. 
Can I submit to you as we begin this morning that many people are terrible about initiating hospitality? I, I, I struggle with one aspect of this message, and I'll just tell you what it is from my heart this morning. I've lived a while, I've pastored a while. When I was young, in my 30s, and I was pastoring, I, I had a tendency to preach do messages. Do this, do that, do this, do that. I, I very rarely do that anymore. I preach B messages. Messages of who we are in Christ and messages of who we are in Him and how He sees us and how He loves us. You know, I do messages that, that, that this happens to be one, okay? So I, uh, I'm just forewarning you of the way I think, the way your pastor thinks. Because if our messages are, are do messages, you're going to be a nervous Christian. I got to do this, and then I got to do that, and I got to do this, and I got to do that. And then you're going to feel like a failure because you're never going to measure up. And I don't want you to be that kind of people. I want to be a good pastor. I want the Lord to touch your heart and let the things that you do out of your heart and mind arise out of your heart, that he's touched your heart, that they, came, they come from a changed heart. But this message is a do message. Um, so thanks for letting me get that little preface out. I, I want to speak to you this morning about being wealthy in relationships at the end of your life. Being rich in relationships. And the, the, the blessing of the abundance of friends beyond your family. We live in an epidemic of loneliness. COVID made it even worse. Everybody alone in their homes, and I can't, remember, I can't tell you how many times I've talked to people who just, they got sick of being at home and alone, and, and it, just, it just made isolation, it magnified the aspect of loneliness and caused all kinds of problems. I, I, I saw a meme this week, and the meme was this, quote, invite someone over for dinner so we can all look at our phones together. Hey, I love my phone. I, I get a lot of work done on my phone. I'm, I'm, I'm on it all the time, texting someone, calling someone. I, I use my drive time, and I'm sometimes calling some of you on the phone. I called Lori this week. I was on my phone driving somewhere, I think. And uh, I, 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 do, I called Ron. Ron, I was on my phone with you, and I'm, I'm on that thing all the time. I love my phone, but they're a problem when we want to inter interact with people. And I recognize sometimes we're sitting at home and we're on our phones. I get it. But we've got to think about the damage that they might be causing in relationships, in building friendships, and that type of thing. Sometimes we've got to put them away. I mean, have you ever just put it away and not had any phone anxiety? Huh, I've got to go get my phone. Or have you ever forgot your phone somewhere? Oh, my. Whatever. Some of this loneliness has been exaggerated through COVID, etc., as I mentioned. I, I, as I titled this message, I, 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 got, I got concerned. I, I, was, I was watching TV and uh, watching the news, and there's an advertisement for a movie called The Invitation Out Right Now. And it looks gory. It looks like it's an invitation to the demonic. And can I tell you what? A lot of times in the world right now, there's an invitation to the demonic. I don't know what the movie's about. I don't even want to know. It just looked weird, like a horror, whatever. Don't go look at it, okay, whatever it was. But I want to tell you, the world right now is an inviting people, no matter our age, to what seemingly is the demonic. It's, it's unashamed in what it's inviting you to. The Lord wants us to invite one another to relationship and friendship. He does. So I, I want to just give three thoughts regarding this idea of invitation. So the first point I want to talk about is the invitation to friendship. I, we, had, we lived in St. Cloud, Minnesota, and I was pastoring a church there. And it's about an hour west, northwest of the Twin Cities, uh, of Minneapolis. And 
you know, we lived in the neighborhood, and, and so you kind of know when somebody's moving out, you see a moving truck, or, or you, you see some sign that some house has been empty and it's filling up, and, and so one day, a house, somebody moved in, the, the, in our backyard, somebody, a family moved in, and we could see the commotion happening, and, and a day or two later, we get this knock at the door, and uh, uh, Mikey, I think your name, his name was Mikey, and, um, and so Mikey uh, knocks at the door, and I open the door, and here's Mikey, and, and he, he was probably eight years old, glasses, and, and I open the door, and Mikey says to me, hey, I, I'm new to the neighborhood, and I saw you have boys. Can I be their friend? <laughs> and uh, I said, Mikey, I said, I'll be glad to introduce you to Taylor and Wesley. And they became great friends. In fact, their family started coming to our church, and, and uh, uh, we still have a relationship with them and stayed in their house after we went back to St. Cloud and visited them. And, uh, but I, I, loved, I loved his forthrightness. Can I just be your friend? I, uh, Jesus and Zacchaeus. Remember, Jesus has this interaction with Zacchaeus, and, and he, Zacchaeus is tax collector, and, and he's, he's, kind of, he's up in the tree, and, and um, uh, Zacch- uh, Jesus made, said these words to Zacchaeus, I think Zacchaeus probably almost fell out of the tree when he said them. Jesus said to Zacchaeus, he said, I'm going to your house today. Now, Jesus could get away with that. Today in our culture, I'm not suggesting we do that, okay? I'm not suggesting we do what Jesus did. He could get away with it. But could you imagine the way Zacchaeus felt? He was a tax collector. He was despised. He was hated. The idea that anybody would go to his house was astonishing. Jesus, in that situation, knew he could be forward to say, Zacchaeus, I'm going to your house today. I wouldn't suggest that you maybe use that, what Jesus did, but I want to point it out. So our text this morning is three words from verse 13 of chapter 12. These three words given to hospitality. Can we say these three words together? Given to hospitality. One more time, louder. Given to hospitality. Right there in verse 13. Let let me just talk about what that means, those words mean for a moment. The word given to, it means to really this, look at my study notes, it really means to pursue hospitality. It's a word, it's a verb, it's in the active tense, and it really means to pursue hospitality. You're going to set in motion. You're going to take action in that direction. It's the power of the dinner table. You're going to make an initiation, and it's going to cost you some money. It's going to cost you something. I want to tell you, eating at home today is a lot cheaper than going out. Holy smokes, I cannot believe restaurant costs these days. And food costs at the grocery store are even crazy. I don't like going there very much. My wife does it. But uh, anyway, I know that they're crazy. But it's this idea of setting in motion. This word given means to pursue. I I was, we were um, uh, in our neighborhood. We live in Hobart, which is kind of west a little bit and 15 minutes from the church or whatever and uh, julio and hannah uh, were playing at for the 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 uh for the hobart had a big to do and julio and hannah we said we knew that they're playing we said we're coming to hear you and we get there and don and kathy were not here this morning they attend church here uh, uh kathy and don may be watching us um they were sitting at a table we were just wandering around and there they were sitting we sat down and had a conversation and and uh and uh, Don told us a story about moving, and, and they, uh, Don and Kathy, met on an airplane. Uh, Kathy's husband passed away, and they, they met on an airplane, and they married. Don reloaded, relocated from the Carolinas to Green Bay. He knows nobody. And if you're in this room and you've ever relocated, I'm a pastor. I've relocated several times, and I have a heart for you. We know what it's like to go to a city and not know a soul other than the people in church that you meet. Not know anybody. So if you're here this morning, you're listening online, you're thinking about relocating, come to church. Your pastor will love you. I understand. I relate to you. 
I have a heart for people that wrote. So Don relocated from the Carolinas. It is the weirdest place. You walk into a city, you don't know where to get an oil change, you don't know where anything's at. It's a strange deal. So Don is a social kind of guy, and he's telling us the story where we're sitting out in this picnic area out at this park, out at Four Seasons Park in Hobart. And uh, he said, I moved town. Nobody invites us over. He said, so I went to 27 of our neighbors, and I invited them all over to our house. I don't know if he told Kathy or not, but he invited them all over. And he said, the amazing part was 26 of the 27 came, and the only, one, the, the only reason the 27th didn't come is because they got it wrong on their calendar. Now, does that speak something of a need? That here's the new guy on the block where somebody should have invited him over. He's the new guy on the block inviting everybody over. Something is amiss. Something is missing. I want to tell you, there is a need. And what I'm telling you is biblical. Given... And so we're sitting there at the table. He tells me that story. We, we were within a stone's throw of our house. I said to Don and Kat, they'd never been to our house. I said, hey, we, I, we could hear the music playing in the park from our deck. And so we, we said, Don and Kat, why don't you come over? I said, we, got, we, we were between grocery shopping, and this is very rare. We had nothing. We have water to offer you. We have nothing. Come sit in our do- deck, deck, come over to our house, and we'll just drink water together. And now I, I, I think, Pastor, don't you keep, yeah, we usually do. And I don't know what, we just had company clean the house out. I don't know what happened, but. Right? Suit, my wife is incredibly hospitable. And we said, have water in there? So we did. We all sat there, and, uh, and we just got to know them and have a great time. But um, this whole, the power of invitation. Um, this word hospitality, what does it mean? I, I got to be clear. You can say, oh, I'm hospitable. I have my family over, my kids, my grandkids, my aunts, uncles, my nieces, whatever. I have them over. I'm hospitable. The truth is, this word biblically does not mean your family. Here's what it means. I'll I'll show you. I got the definition here. It's the word phileoxenia, and it means to love strangers. To love phileo, if you recognize the root of that word, it's one of the roots, the words for love in the scripture. You know, agape, phileo, eros, those, those words love. It's this word, love, of strangers. It's a compound word, the love of strangers. It's not even believers. It's those you don't know. I wrote it in my notes this way. It means to pursue friends you don't know yet. Pursue friends you don't know yet. Ah, invitation. Jesus talks about the invitation uh, in the, the parable of the wedding and the parable of the banquet. Remember, he's talking about inviting people and people not coming and all that kind of thing. Jesus knew about inviting. That word in the Bible means to call, to name, and to send forth. Have you ever done this? You, said, you say to your spouse or you say to your friend, we should have some neighbors over sometime. Oh, great. We should have some people from church over sometime. Great. Doesn't cut it. It means to name them and to call their name and to send for them. Call them by name. Not a great idea. Not a platitude of we should do this. But it means to name their name Put it on the calendar when you're going to do it. That's what this word in the Bible, invitation, means. It means to be specific. Uh, Let me just give you some mistakes in our thinking that could come out of this. You say, Pastor, you are right. This scripture is meant for those that have an outgoing personality. That's exactly what it means wrong. This scripture, the scriptures I read, talk about the natural behaviors of regular Christian life. That's not, earlier in chapter 12, it talks about spiritual gifts of service. This is talking about regular behavior of Christians. 
to reach out, to be hospitable. And it's, it's irregardless of personality. And then you say, oh, pastor, well, I'm not very good. I'm not very talkative. What am I going to say? Have faith. Doesn't the scripture say somewhere, when you don't know what to say, he'll help you? I, I'm just kidding. That's really a different context. Okay, I took it out of context a little bit. Um, yeah, you know, it's, I, I, I got to, it's kind of, I'm, I'm yapping up here. Sometimes I get in social settings, I don't like to talk a whole lot. I, I'm, I'm kind of outgoing, I get it. I, I, but I do, I love to listen. You know, learn, I, I, I'm amazed. Well, I gotta be careful how I say this, but we need to learn to ask questions. Questions that are not too personal, but questions that shows we have an interest in other people. Their background, their life, what they're thinking, what they're going through. We need to ha- learn. I'm not, I don't have some questions to suggest to you, but we've got to, we've got to learn to ask questions to engage so that we show interest in other people's lives, what's going on in their lives. Think about those questions to ask people. And I, and, and I in social studies, I love to draw people. I love to listen to them. What's going on in their life? What's going on in their heart? And, and, and find interest in their lives. And you know what? When you're quiet, maybe you're a little shy, oh, there's great freedom that comes when you ask the right questions and get the other person talking. Then you're off the hook. Ah, my sweet wife here. She is led of the Holy Spirit most of the time. Notice I said most. I love her. She's a dear. And she helps me a lot. And, and I don't even go, I don't even tell her what I'm preaching half the time. I've done this a long time. And, and we, we, yesterday we were having devotions. And, um, and we were just sitting in our, our, our chairs in, our, in my office at home and in our little den area. And uh, so she says to me, I, I, I tell her what I'm preaching. I'm telling her about this thing about this, this hospitality means the love of strangers. And she, says, Pastor, she says, Jerry, I know what we need to do. I'll organize today dinners for eight for the church and... She was listening to the devil. I know she was. Okay? And I said, I'm teasing. You got it? You got everybody get it? No, nobody take me to the bank on that one. I said, no. No, 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 no. I didn't say it that forthright. Okay, I just said no to her. I'm not going to rob our people of the opportunity to invite people themselves. Do you understand if we as a church just do it, and there's nothing wrong with dinner straight. We've done it in the past. We'll do it in the future. Nothing wrong with that. We're going to have munchies and, and, and dinners. We're going to have them, and we just had our church pegging. We're going to keep doing them. But if we do all the inviting for you, it makes you weak. The obligation of Romans chapter 12 is you do it. You do it. And then enjoy the blessing and the benefit that comes with it. Uh, my, my sweet wife, she, she, she is good relationally. She is probably better than I am relation, relationally. I'm really picking on you today. I'm going to get punished, aren't I? And uh, so we first got married. And, and my brother-in-law said, you're, you said, Sue has 500 friends. And uh, she, my wife, she's so warm and loving, and she's exactly who, she's, she's who you see right now. She's that way all the time, okay? And um, so when we first got married, she would get together with a friend, a new friend or whatever, and she would say this. She would say, let's get together next week. And she wanted to get together with, let, let's get together every week. She's got 500 friends, and she wants to get together with them every week. How many of you know that's a little unrealistic? It is. It's a little unrealistic. So I was kidding her about it when we first got married. Am I right? I would kid her about it. I said, you can't. I said, Sue, you, we got to work. You're, you're in college. We can't do all this stuff. And I would kid her. Her heart was there. I want to get together with every, all of my friends every week. I heard her heart. So what I'm talking about is not being unrealistic. It's just when you can. Maybe once a month or once every two months or once every three months or twice a year. Whatever fits for you. I'm not, you know, whatever works in your, there's no legalism in there. But just make it happen and let's be hospitable. 
Let me just address a couple other things here, kind of mistakes that we can make. You say, well, Pastor, I don't know who to invite over. They're not like me. What does it say in our text here? It says, be of the same mind toward one another. Do not set your mind on high things, but associate with the humble. Do not be wise in your own opinion. You know, that takes the discrimination off of saying, you know what, I'm just going to look at people as people, and I don't have to look for everybody that's just like me. Do you ever get it? It's a mistake we make, and it, it, it stops us from opening our heart to relationships and beautiful friendships in the future because we're looking for somebody just like us. Don't look for somebody just like you. It's more, life is more intriguing and invigorating when you find people that are different than you. Uh, just, can, can I give you another little piece of uh, a Jerryism? Is, 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 uh, from... This is not even biblical. I'm just going to give you a thought here, okay? I'm just I'm telling you in advance. Um, and when you get together, you're not trying to find a new best friend. Dear friends versus best friends. If somebody comes to me and says, they're my best friend, whatever. Okay, th- this is totally unbiblical, okay? This is just a thought, okay? Everybody, could everybody handle that this morning? If somebody comes to me and they say, this is my best friend, I'm going to look at them, and I'm not going to tell you, okay? I'm telling you from up here. I'm not going to tell you. I'm going to say, what's wrong with you? You mean you're going to captivate them that nobody else can be their friend? They're my best friend, and I'm going to possess you, and you can't be friends with anybody else. Let me just give you a little words of wisdom. See, I've got dear friends. I've got a bunch of dear friends. And I got friendships are wonderful. Dear friends, best friend says, I'm possessive. It's mine. Dear friends says, I've got dear friendships that the Lord has opened and brought to my life, brought to my heart, brought into relationship. They're ordained of the Lord through hospitality and friendship that God has brought our way. Another thing in, in the mistakes we make is we could be too pressuring in getting together. And, um, and we, have to, we have to say pressure. You say, hey, you invite somebody over. We got together with Roger and Diane, and they're newer to our congregation. And, and I said to them, I said, we're going to go, go out for lunch. I said, remember I said, I always say this at the end, and no pressure. And no, sometimes we can be too pressuring. We don't need to be that way. Just always give, give people room to get off the hook. Some people are busy and can't always do it. And, and, and we just open our hearts, and if, if it works, great. If it doesn't work, great. Just no pressure, but... Would it work for us to get together? No pressure. So the invitation to friendship. Number two, the invitation to fellowship. Is really an invitation to people. Turn your Bibles for a moment to Acts chapter 2. Just turn back to the previous chapter, Acts chapter 2 for a moment. Let me talk about this. This is amazing. This is where, biblically, we make a mistake. The The invitation to hospitality is an invitation to strangers. An invitation to fellowship is really an invitation amongst believers. I didn't make that up. It's just biblical. Uh, I I know that in different clubs, I've been part of different community clubs, and you say, we're going to get together for fellowship. But fellowship is the word koinonia. It's really a spiritual term. It's for Believers to get together. It's for spiritual people. Koinonia, you're sharing spiritual concepts, things, grace, mercy, the forgiveness of the Lord Jesus. You're sharing, you have a commonality. That's the birthplace of this idea of fellowship. Hospitality is getting together with people I don't know well, and fellowship is getting together with other believers. Acts 2, something amazing happened here. It was the beginning of the church. They never said, I'm inviting you to church. They invited people to fellowship. Verse 42 of chapter 2, it says, And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship in the breaking of bread and prayers. Fellowship. Verse 46 and 47. So continuing daily with one accord in the temple and breaking bread from house to house, they ate their food with gladness and simplicity of heart. 
praising God and having favor with all the people, and the Lord added to the church daily those who were being saved. What were they doing? They were fellowshipping. They were breaking bread. Can I tell you what? We got this new land next door, and someday God's going to allow us to use it and to be, uh, use it more and, and to, to fill up this place. But can I tell, suggest to you one of the ways is going to come through fellowship? And, 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 and let me just talk to you about this. I, I am, it, it, this message by nowhere is, is preaching down at you. I'm actually preaching to you about something you're all really pretty good at. You, you really are. And so please don't take it as that. I'm just, I'm just preaching you to, to you God's word. So you guys are really pretty good. I, I hear people come to our church and say, it's a welcoming congregation, a loving congregation, and you are that. And so I think the area that we might want to maneuver to is this area of those that we don't know better. But this idea of fellowship, it was so powerful in the birth of the church. So that part of invitation is to invite them into the church family. It's to people. It's gathering together and into fellowship, whether it's one of our meals or get-togethers. The scripture says in Hebrews 10, do not give up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing. It's important in this day and age that we're together. That's why we come to church together, that we're together. I, I want to just tell you, and, and give you something to invite people to in the next month to fellowship in this congregation. I've been praying about what we're going to do after Labor Day and a message series, and I was talking to Chad this week. And I want to just tell you right now what I'm going to be preaching on coming the Sunday after Labor Day, starting September 11th. Uh, we're going to bring a, a, a series of messages called The Healer's Touch. And I'm going to begin the first Sunday with the physical healing. As, as a pastor, I watch over the congregation. And for the most part, we have been a very healthy congregation. Even through COVID, a bunch of us got COVID. But we, had, we lost nobody. And, um, but I have seen recently an attack physically on our congregation. And I, I, I know how to address that. I'm going to come right back to the devil. And I'm going to say, we're going to come and we're going to believe in he- a healing that lo- the Lord is going to touch and heal. he's going to do. So uh, on that Sunday, we're going to start that message through the healer's touch. And, and over the, those few weeks, we're going to deal with emotional healing. We're going to deal with, you know how the scripture says, Jesus says he came to heal what? The brokenhearted. He's, he came to do that. I'm going to talk about mental health. We're going to talk from, from a biblical perspective. We're going to talk about spiritual healing. You know, salvation means wholeness. We're going to deal with that. So the healing is going to go for a few weeks. And so in, 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 is we're in fellowship together. I want to encourage you to invite people in September, October. Invite people that they're going to come and they're going to receive the healer's touch in their life, whatever aspect it is. And we'll try to tell you ahead of time which message is coming so that maybe it applies to certain people in different ways. But invite them to fellowship. Invite one another out. Invite one another into fellowship. Those of you that know each other, those of you that, that uh, don't know each other, invite each other in, into your homes and, and out for a meal. Uh, there's something that happens. I, I, earlier this week, I had, a, I had a tough couple of days dealing with some stress, not church-related. It was something outside of church. And uh, we had an elder meeting on Tuesday night. And I got together, and I, one of them came early. Nate came early, and I, I was telling him a little bit about what I was dealing with. And, um, but I didn't have to boo-hoo on them about what I was dealing with. Just their presence, being in the presence, lifted my spirits as we were together. I was encouraged as I just, you know, sometimes it's just our prayer. We don't have to go through everything that we're dealing with. We don't have to spill all our bananas about what we're dealing with. It's the presence of other believers just being together lifts us up. Maybe you came to church this morning and you say you're a little bit down or dogged or, or struggling. I want to tell you, just being together can lift your spirit. And Satan wants to keep you isolated and alone is what he wants to do. Lastly in this and very short this morning is this. So an invitation to a friendship, an invitation to fellowship. Thirdly is, listen to this. Jesus invites himself to us through hospitality. Uh, He invites you to relationship like a human relationship. Here's the scripture. Revelation 3.20. Look what it says. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come into him. And what does that say? What does it say next words? I'll dine with him and he with me. Jesus invites us in. If we don't have a relationship, he invites us into relationship through the dining hospitality experience. He says, 
If you don't know me, I want to sit down. We're strangers. I want to get to know you through conversations just like you would in a human relationship. Is that not awesome? Maybe you're here in this room and you say, Pastor, I, I don't know how to pray. Talk to Jesus like you would a friend. Talk to Jesus like you would me. That's all. He wants to dine with you. If you go out with somebody in a human relationship, he wants to sit down and he wants to, he wants to just have relationship with you and he wants to talk with you just like that's the basis. He invites us to a relationship with himself through hospitality. That's what that scripture says. It even goes beyond that in a couple other passages of scripture that it talks about. Um, he, he talks about that through John. And through the Apostle John in, in, in several verses in there. And let me just get to that in a moment. But before I do that, Jesus talks about this idea of inviting people to the banquet, to the wedding, the parables in Matthew 22 and Luke 14. I, I don't want to get into all that. But you might say, Pastor, how do I handle rejection? If somebody tells me, no, I don't have time or I can't do it, how do you deal with rejection? Can I tell you what? Jesus dealt with it all the time and he still deals with it. Here, so, so how did he, So, because here's what happened. If you want to have a relationship with you, you want to build a friendship with somebody, and you can do this. Nobody will invite me over, and you get bitter and nasty about it. Nobody will reach out to me. Nobody's ask, ever asked me out. Nobody's ever asked me to their house. And you can really get downright cranky about it. Is that the way to go? How do you solve that? How did Jesus do it? They rejected Jesus. People today are still rejecting Jesus. And you know what he does? He just keeps on inviting. He never stops. He just keeps on inviting. And guess what? Because of that, Jesus has relationships all over the world, every skin color, every nationality, Poor, middle class, well-to-do, educated, uneducated, every skin color. Jesus has friends all over the world because he just keeps on inviting. He doesn't let rejection get to him. Don't stop. Jesus did it. It's so, the principle of sowing and reaping. If you sow into friendship and relationships, guess what? You're going to reap them. If you don't sow into relationships, if you sit at home all by yourself, you never invite anybody over, you never invite anybody out, you're going to sit there alone. But if you'll sow into friendships, you'll sow into relationships, guess what? You'll have them back. You'll get them back. John, who was the closest to Jesus, wrote this concept in the book of John and Revelation. And I have the scriptures up here in John 14, uh, 4, 14 and 15. I'm not going to, you, you can write, just jot those down quick. And I'm done. But John 6, 35, one of those scriptures, it says this. this, this to this point, he invites us to himself through hosp- this idea of hospitality. Jesus said to them, and they're talking about the feeding of the loaves and the fishes. He said to them in John 6, 35, I am the bread of life. Isn't that what it says? Go to, go to this verse, uh, Taylor. John. And Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. He who comes to me shall never hunger, hunger and he who believes in me shall never thirst. Can you believe it? Jesus invites you and me to himself through this concept of hospitality when we don't know him. So I ask you the question this morning, do you know him? Do you have a relationship with Jesus? Have you invited him into your heart? He wants to dine with you. If you haven't, invite him in this morning. He wants to live in you. And so our text this morning, these three words, Romans 12, 13, given to hospitality. Can we say it one last time together? Given to hospitality to hospitality. Can I tell you what, church? Listen to this. People in this world are dying. They're dying for an invitation from you. An invitation to friendship, an invitation to fellowship, and an invitation to Jesus himself. Let's stand together this morning. Father, this morning, as we come to you, Lord, I trust your Holy Spirit has ministered through your word. That, Lord, you would cause our heart to turn to the love of strangers 
Lord, it could be people in this room that we just don't know very well that we wanna, you're, you want to make new friendships even out of this room. Lord, you're not meaning to go down to the street corner and bring somebody in. That's not what this means. It means just somebody in our, our circle of influence, our work, our neighborhood, our church friends that we don't know them very well that you want us to reach out to. Lord, those that are fellowship, those are believing friends that we get together. Lord, I thank you that you led the way, that you've reached out to us through hospitality when we didn't know you very well. And Lord, I pray that our congregation, those listening online, those that are in this room, Lord, we into our spirit would seep the power of the invitation. That Lord, you, you put in our, our spirit, our heart, those that we're to call by name, to be specific, to put it on our calendar, to spend time with, so we can make new friends. Lord, Satan wants to keep us lonely, wants to keep us isolated, but Jesus, you want to bring us into a, a wealth of relationships. In your name we pray. With every head bowed and every eye closed, no one looking around, giving privacy to everyone in this room right now, you say, Pastor Jerry, to be honest with you, I could use some more relationships in my life. And say, Pastor, pray for me that I'd have the courage to invite from time to time. If that's you, just raise your hand. Just say, Pastor, this message, the Holy Spirit just spoke to me a, time, a little bit through this message. Just raise your hand. That's you. That's you. Just raise your hand. Yeah. Hallelujah. You can put those hands down. I wonder how many in this room right now, you say, Pastor, I, I don't know that I've invited Jesus into my heart and my life. Or, or, and I have invited him to come in and dine with me and live in me. And you say, Pastor, I, I want to do that this morning. I want to invite Jesus into my heart and my life. Just raise your hand. Say, Pastor, I need Jesus this morning. I need him. Maybe everyone in this room's a believer. It just might be. Maybe you're listening online. You need to invite him into your heart and life. I encourage you to do that. He wants to be your savior and friend and live inside of you. Father, this morning, you've seen these hands. Lord, I just pray that you would just touch every life to, to de- today. I pray that you'd open our hearts in a new way to fellowship and to relationship. And Lord, I pray that our people at the end of their life, they could say that God, because of your word, that they have many friends, that they've been a good friend, but they have many friends. They have dear friends in this life. God, I pray you break break every curse of loneliness, every curse of isolation, and you'd open up our heart to one another like ever before. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Can everybody say, praise the Lord. Yeah. Lord bless you. Have a wonderful day and be back. We have a great Sunday next Sunday. Lord bless you. All throughout my history Your faithfulness has walked beside me The winter storms made way for spring In every season From where I'm standing